Hello everybody and welcome to the Cinepax YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be doing a cool tutorial on how you can make this super like twisted warping effect inside your music videos and just stylize uh, your lights and transitions and make it look really cool. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now this video is inspired by uh, the guillotine music video right here. Um, now specifically I'm creating this sort of warping effect here. So as you can see he's kind of warping into position. Um, and jumping around there's another cool uh, scene here let me find right here uh, so right here you can see how it is warping into the footage and there's a lot going on and there's a bunch of different warping effects that he does inside of the music video but we're gonna do some basics here and create one in DaVinci Resolve so let's get started all right so get your clip set up and bring it into fusion now with each one of these effects there's always two steps that we're going to be doing for this effect you want to first isolate whatever you want to warp within your scene okay and then second of all apply the warp effect and then last if you want to apply any glow effects uh some noise some sort of stylization to it you do that last so let's go ahead and start with our first object i want to basically isolate uh, the lights in this scene. So click on your media, click shift spacebar, and type in Luma here. Now you can isolate whatever you want in however way that you want. You can use a mask if you want to isolate an object, but I'm going to be using these bright lights. So Luma here will do that best for me. So I'm going to go into the Luma key here and I'm going to bring the gamma up, uh, contract and expand. I'm going to bring that down, uh, bring the gamma back up. Let's see. And then give it just a little bit of blur like right there. All right, perfect. So as you can see, it simply isolates the um, lights now. Now, the second thing is I want to actually split off of this though. So let's drag from our media in into the output. That way, uh, now you can see we've branched off because we're going to merge the Luma here by dragging the output back into the media to create a merge node. So here you go. Now you can see there's a merge node. So we're splitting the signal from our media going into a merge node and just extracting the lights out of our original footage. Okay, so now we're going to do the second step, which is add the warp effect. So you can apply any warp effect that you want. There's grid warps, which we'll use in the, my second example, but we're going to use um, lens distortion. So that'll be this one right here and add it. Okay, so now as you can see, it will add this little star here. And if I move this around, it warps the light layer that we have isolated around. Let's ramp up the distortion all the way up to one. That way it has a huge effect. And as we move this around, everything's gonna warp really cool. All right, next I wanna keyframe this. That way it actually moves throughout the uh, footage. So let's go ahead and go to our first frame, keyframe it, go a little bit further. I'm gonna make a zigzag pattern. So I'm gonna bring this down, go a few more frames, zigzag back up and then go to the last frame and pull it all the way off screen. And to make these smooth, we can click on each of these keyframes and click this button right here in the top toolbar to smooth out into a spline. That way these will look really smooth. The movement will look smooth. So if we play that through, you can see the light is warping everywhere and it looks really cool. And I love the last footage where each light just peels off of the scene. Um, actually, I want to exaggerate that a little bit more. I want it to go very far off the screen. So let's go like right there. Perfect. And that's really about it. There's our warping effect. It's in a slow motion clip, so you can really kind of see how the movement is all taken in. Do it in a faster clip to get some really cool motion. If you want to take it a step further, I'm going to go ahead and once again, shift spacebar and add a soft glow, soft glow. Now this is going to make it a lot brighter, as you can see right away. Um, and it's gonna make it stand out. So if we play this through, we have crazy light warping effects. Um, we can go ahead and uh, bring down the gain just a little bit if we need to. Um, and that will just make it a lot more stylized. And if you wanna go even further, you can do whatever you want at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and add maybe, um, what is it? Uh, damage damage film damage if i add film damage you can see that gives it a little bit of a yellow tint to it and also adds a little bit of noise so it kind of looks really cool stylized play it through 
um, we get a really cool light peeling effect at the end. You know, we could also create a cool transition if we make a light cover the camera. So to do that, we could just click anywhere and click background, all right? And bring in a background and then let's mask out a square. So let's click this button right here to make our square, rotate it, maybe put it like right there. We're making a shape. This will be our light that's gonna cover the camera and let's put it right there um and once we click and merge that with our scene you'll see that there we have a black square now let's change this black square to uh white or not white let's change it to this yellow color because we're trying to replicate this light right um and then add a soft glow to it soft glow and of course, bring up the threshold and uh, what is it? The glow size, that's what I really wanna bring up. Bring that up as much as we can. And as you can see, now we have a fake light that we can go ahead and move around. Um, so to move that around though, let's go back to our rectangle here and we can move it around freely and let's animate it. So I'm gonna bring it to right here when everything warps out of the footage. Right here, I want it to fly in. So I'm gonna go ahead and keyframe it and then go a little bit further and keyframe it flying across the screen. Right there, perfect. And then to finish this transition, we need to actually hide everything that it passes through. So to do that, we'll go back to our original media, add another square mask right here. And let's bring this up like this, rotate it. And this is gonna affect both the light layer and our base layer, and I'm okay with that. It creates a cool effect, but you might wanna make your masks differently. And let's go ahead and keyframe this so it actually lines up with this light. So right here, we want it showing everything, of course, but then let's keyframe the center, go a few frames forward, and let's have it basically hide everything underneath that this light passes through. So like right there, Go all the way to the end where it flies off screen and let's make sure that it's working and it does perfect so if we play that through the light flies through and covers the background so going back into the edit page we are done with this effect and we can layer this onto another clip so let's go ahead and play it through and see what it looks like got our light warps and our sick wipe transition perfect which brings us to our next clip, which don't go together at all in theme, but still will be a great part of this tutorial. Bringing this clip back into Fusion, we're gonna be doing a very similar thing, but with slight differences. We're gonna to try to warp this bicycle. This clip has black bars built into it, and that is completely fine because I think it'll look cool if the motorcycle warps through the black bars and creates like a 3D effect. So let's go ahead and do that. So exact same thing as before. First thing we need to do is isolate what we want to warp. Now, this was gonna be a little differently because we wanna use a polygon mask. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna copy my clip here and paste it. So now I have two of them. And why don't we go ahead and click uh, F2 to rename this. And we're gonna say, uh, let's see, mm, uh, let's see, po polygon mask, all right? And this will be an outline of our motorcycle. So let's go ahead and actually mask this. So click on it and add a polygon mask to it by clicking this button. So I'm gonna do a super rough cut out because this is a tutorial and I don't want to waste too much time. So I might not even use splines. We're gonna just eh, use a little bit and just click through here, get the handles very roughly. All right, there I've created a little mask there and now we want to actually track it throughout the footage, okay? So let's go ahead and click on here to right click here for shape animation, which it's already selected. And let's go a few frames forward, like right here. And let's just uh, readjust it real quick. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just fast forward through this part. So go to each frame and make sure that it lines up with your mask and just track it through, all right?
All right, so I've done a super rough track of this and I've only done half of it because we're only gonna be animating half of this footage, the first half of it. Um, and from there, we're ready to move on. So this time around, instead of using a lens distortion, we're gonna click shift spacebar again and type in warp. And we're gonna use a grid warp, okay? So if we add this, we're gonna go ahead and bring this in. And what this allows you to do, if I click and drag, it warps our layer here. And as you can see, since we've isolated the motorcycle, it only isolates the motorcycle. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, let's go ahead and, so to make this cool, I'm gonna go ahead and, let's see, hold down control and zoom out with my mouse wheel. And let's go ahead and drag this out. Now, when I'm dragging this out, I'm gonna be careful. I don't want anything to overlap with the motorcycle, okay? So just warp, just pull things out and make sure, be careful not to touch or warp the motorcycle in any way, okay? Now let's go like that. And just make something really wavy and cool. Now to animate, what we wanna do is drag this image through this distortion here and then have it fly into this area, which as you can see, we left alone, so it will look really cool. Now to do that, we're actually gonna be using another grid warp, okay, to basically stretch it into this other grid warp here. It's a little confusing, but just follow with me. I know what you're thinking, you probably want, you're thinking about just uh, keyframing it, so that basically you grab all of this and then basically animate it, so it basically warps back into its position uh, but by keyframing it and animating it like that it looks really janky and it doesn't look cool you don't get that wavy distorted effect it will just warp back really weird into place and it doesn't look cool this way if we click on here clip shift spacebar create another grid warp by doing it this way and let's go ahead and bring down the amount of grid lines here you will actually create a much cooler effect. So let's bring up our cursor size and let's just go ahead and go to where we want it to stop. So right around here, I want everything to go back to normal. So let's set a keyframe here for a warp and then go back to the beginning of our footage where we want everything to warp out of control. And I'm gonna drag everything really far, really far out. Um, try not to grab anything there and let's just pull it through. All right, perfect. So now if we go ahead and play this, we have it animated and as it's warping back into position, the second grid warp will be distorting it even more to create a really cool wavy effect that you won't get by just amplimate animating it keyframed by with one grid warp. Ideally, what I'd like to do is actually move this entire net through the footage. That way it creates a really cool wavy effect, but I couldn't find a way to do that inside DaVinci Resolve. So this is the greatest workaround that I found. Uh, to touch it all off, go ahead and add a cool, uh, let's add a spline to everything. So let's click on our spline uh, editor here, click on grid warp two, which is the one that we have animated. And let's try to find our keyframes here. And right here on the second one, I'm gonna go ahead and add a curve to it. That way it comes in smoothly. So let's play that through. And there we have this really smooth warping effect. I like it a lot. All right, to finish everything off, I'm gonna go ahead and add a grain overlay from the Cinepacks uh, film overlay pack. Uh, this is actually a free asset. Go ahead and check out all the free packs at cinepacks.com. Also check out our paid packs if you do like those as well. You got plenty of high quality assets that'll make things really easy for editing and speed up your workflows. And I got plenty of tutorials on those packs as well. Now to just touch this off, I'm gonna drag this into our scene. Once again, this is a free asset, so you can actually use this one for your projects. And we're gonna go ahead and change the composite mode to soft lights and play that through. It looks really cool and I like it a lot. Pull down Alt to duplicate it out and we are finished with our timeline. All right guys, that wraps up our tutorial for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this a lot. Hope it helped you out and hopes gets you started in DaVinci Resolve and doing some awesome music video edits. Uh, the warping effect. The warping effect is super modular. You can use it for basically a ton of different things and a ton of different applications. There is no one correct way to do it. You kind of have to mess around until it just looks good and that's kind of how all VFX work. 
So I hope you guys enjoy this video. As usual, go check out all the Cinepax packs, uh, link in the description. Uh, if you enjoyed the grain pack and you wanna look at any of our purchase packs because that helps fund these videos. So go ahead, check those out and have a great day as always. Bye guys.